Hello, my name is Kim John Ilagan and I will be explaining the circuit shown. This circuit is a PAM circuit or a pulse amplitude modulation circuit. First, what is PAM? Pulse amplitude modulation is a form of signal modulation where the message information is encoded in the amplitude of a series of signal pulses. It is an analog pulse modulation scheme in which the amplitudes of a train of carrier pulses are varied according to the sample value of the message signal. As you can see, we have three major parts. First is a sine wave generator, second is a square wave generator, and the third one is the modulator. As you can see, this kind of circuit is called Colpitt's oscillator of a circuit. The Colpitt's oscillator design uses two center tapped capacitors in series with a parallel inductor to form its resonance circuit, producing sinusoidal oscillations. As you can see, this Colpitt's being an inverting amplifier. The configuration of the 750 kilo ohms resistor sets the amplifier gain. This Colpitt's oscillator consists of parallel LC resonator tank circuit whose feedback is achieved by the way of capacitive divider. The frequency of the oscillations of for Colpitt's oscillator is determined by the resonant frequency of the LC tank circuit. I will show you the computation for calculating the frequency. As you can see, the output frequency can be calculated with this formula. So, then the amount of the feedback developed by the Colpitt's oscillator is based on the capacitance ratio of, of the C1, which is the 4 microfarad, 4 microfarad, and the C2, which is the 20 microfarad. And the output frequency is 2250 hertz. Now, I will show you the output of the oscillator. As you can see, the oscilloscope channel 1 is connected to the output of the sine wave generator. Observing the sine wave, as you can see, the oscillator output starts very small curves to big ones. The peak-to-peak -peak of the stable sine wave increases until it reaches the maximum value. As you can see, the peak-to-peak -peak value of the sine wave stays at 16.3 volts. And our output frequency is 2.23 kilohertz, which is almost the same with our calculated output frequency. Next is I will show you the square wave generator. This is our square wave generator. This circuit includes an IC called the 555 timer. This is a, a stable 555 oscillator circuit. It is important to remember that the pins of a 555 timer this is pin 1, pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the ground. This is the trigger. This is the output. This is the reset. This is the control voltage. This is the threshold, discharge, and the supply. In the 555 oscillator circuit, pin 2 and pin 6 are connected together allowing the circuit to re-trigger itself on each and every cycle allowing it to operate as a free running oscillator. During each cycle, the capacitor charges up both the both timing resistors. This is the our R1, this is our R2, but discharges itself only through resistor 2. As the other side of Resistor 2 is connected to the discharge terminal, which is our pin 7. 
Normally, an unstable 555 oscillator circuit doesn't have any diodes. However, I added two diodes to improve its duty cycle. By connecting some diodes, this is our D1 or diode 1 and our D2. The diode 1 between the trigger input and the discharge input, the timing capacitor will now charge up directly to resistor 1 only. As the resistor 2, this is our resistor 2, is effectively shorted out by the diode. The capacitor discharges as normal through resistor 2. For the second diode, D2, can be connected in series with the discharge resistor, R2, if, re ensure, if required to ensure that the timing capacitor will now charge up through D1 and not through parallel path of R2. This is because during the charging process of diode 2 is connected in reverse bias blocking the flow of the current through itself. Since we have two diodes present in the circuit, the upper comparator or the capacitor charge time has different formula. Now I will show you the computation for the a stable 555 oscillation circuit. This is the computation for the stable 555 oscillator circuit. Since we have two diodes present in our circuit, the upper comparator limit or the capacitor charge time has different formula. Both T high and T low, we get 6.93 microseconds. For the output frequency, it is the sum of the T high and T low, 1 over T, then we get the 72,000 Hz. And for our duty cycle, our calculated duty cycle is 50%. Now I will show you the simulation. As you can see, our oscilloscope channel 1 is connected to the output of the square wave generator. It is important to remember that R1 and R2 are of the same value. Because if they are not of the same value, then the duty cycle will not become 50%. If we change R1, if we increase R1 to 300 kilo ohms, then now our comparator, upper comparator limit will increase. That is why R1 and R2 should be of the same value. Now I will show you the modulator. This is our modulator. The modulator I use in the circuit is an N-channel type JFET. Specifically, I use BFW10. The model manufacturer is Philips and its packaging type is Tier 0 72. So when you buy this, you can see a metal can, also known as metal header, package which is sealed hermetically. I will show you the output of the modulator. The channel 1 of the oscilloscope is connected to the sine wave generator, channel 2 to the modulator, and channel 3 to the square wave generator. Now I will show you the output. As you can see, the channel 1 is our sine wave. And channel 2 is our pump signal and channel 3 is our square wave which is the sample pulse. It is important to remember that the frequency of the sample pulse should be higher than the sine wave. As you can see, 
the output of the pump sig of the modulator is a single polarity pump signal being at zero voltage when the analog signal is negative the peak to peak of the pump signal is the is the positive peak voltage of the sine wave due to the absence of the negative half cycle as you can see there is no phase shift happens It is also important to put a smoothing capacitor to the output because if I remove it, You can see that the output of the modulator have too many fluctuations. So it is really important to put a smoothing capacitor. It is also important to put resistors to the out for the to the input of the modulator to avoid error in the output of the modulator so that is a pulse amplitude modulation circuit thank you